Hey guys, it's Darwin here to answer some of the most frequently asked questions I've been getting about my upcoming hike on the Appalachian Trail. All right, so this isn't gonna be your standard FAQ video because I would think at this point, most people, especially people that watch this channel, know what the Appalachian Trail is. But just in case you don't, the AT is a 2,190 mile trail that runs from Maine to Georgia or Georgia to Maine, depending on which way you're gonna hike it. It goes through 14 states. I hiked it between 2015 and 2016 and I'm about to go back out there in like less than a week. So now that we're all caught up to speed, I wanted to make a little FAQ video, a frequently asked question video on all the questions that I've been getting ever since I announced that I would be going back out to re-hike a big chunk of the AT. So one of the biggest questions that I've been getting since I announced that I was gonna go back out there is why the AT again? Well, this year marks my five year anniversary from stepping off at Springer Mountain and becoming hiker trash. The AT completely changed my life and kind of put me down this path for the last five years. Doing the AT, then through hiking the PCT, a bunch of trails in between, starting this YouTube channel, and recently releasing a documentary film about another trail. So just to kind of celebrate those five years of all the things that the AT has kind of led me to, I wanted to go back out there and re-hike it. The other reason is back in 2015, I had no plans to start a YouTube channel, so I didn't film any of it. Uh, I filmed some in 16 when we went back out there, but in 2015, all I have are some crappy photos that I took with my cell phone, and I love documenting my hikes mainly because, well, I love making videos, but the other reason is to inspire other people. So this gives me a chance to get back out there uh, with a little bit more camera skills than I ever had in the past and be able to document my hike and document it in a different way, which uh, you guys should be pretty surprised about how I'm gonna be filming my hike this year. So the next biggest question that I've been getting and probably a misconception at this point is, are you hiking the whole AT? So no, I'm not gonna go out and through hike the entire AT from Georgia to Maine. I basically have two months to get back out on the AT. So I will be starting the exact same day that I started in 2015 because, well, I'm a little bit nostalgic and I'll be hiking roughly between 500 and 900 miles. I know that's a big gap, but a lot can change and I'm not completely headstrong about hiking massive miles every day. Knowing me, I probably will hike bigger miles, but my main goal of getting out there is just kind of reliving that experience from 2016 and documenting my hike. What section are you hiking and why? So I'm gonna start from Springer Mountain, which is the southern terminus in Georgia, and I'm basically gonna do that first big section five to 900 miles. And why? Because for me, all of my best memories from the AT in 2015 we're really in those first 500 miles, going through Georgia, North Carolina, and really discovering what kind of hiker that I was and discovering the whole through hiking culture. So that's kind of my favorite section of the trail because it's, it's where I have my most memories. So that's why I wanna go back out there. That's why I wanna document it. And that's the section that I'll be doing. Are you hiking the approach trail? No, I'm not hiking the approach trail. So for some of you that don't know what that is, the AT actually starts at the top of Springer Mountain. So typically people will start at Amakaloa Falls and then hike eight miles up to the start of the AT. It's called the Approach Trail. There's a bunch of stairs, there's some really nice waterfalls. The reason I'm not doing the Approach Trail this year is because I didn't do the Approach Trail in 2015. And like I said, I wanna basically go out there and re-hike the exact same hike that I had except for, you know, with lighter gear, maybe go a little bit faster and be able to document it. So no, I will not be hiking the approach trail. I will be getting a ride up to the one trailhead uh, that's kind of close to Springer, hiking back to Springer, and then taking off for my section. Are you vlogging your hike? Yeah, um, as I've said, I'm gonna be documenting my hike. And that's one of the main reasons that I'm going out there because I didn't film in 2015 
And this year, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, I've done my regular trail vlogs in the past of me hiking and talking to the camera, and then I recently released a documentary film that just kind of gave me another way to be creative and do more voiceover and do more interviews. So I think that I'm gonna kind of take those two worlds and mesh them together. And my trail vlogs this year are gonna be more like mini documentaries. At least that's the idea that I have in my head. So we'll see how that goes. There'll be plenty of me talking to the camera, but I also wanna interview other people while I'm out there and I wanna do voiceovers. And I just wanna talk more about the trail and the community and just the lifestyle of hiking the AT. Another question that I've been getting a bunch of is do you plan on bringing extra layers because of the winter? Not really. Uh, about a month ago, I put out a video called my backpacking layers for 2020 or backpacking clothes for 2020. I'll, uh, I'll put it up here and I'll leave it down below. But basically over the years, I've really been able to dial in my kit to a basic layering system. So shorts, tights, rain pants or wind pants, a hoodie, which is this alpaca hoodie that I'm wearing now, a jacket, which is not this jacket, and just being able to kind of layer and build warmth and cool myself down with just a very simple setup is kind of what I'm used to at this point. It's basically what I did on the AT and 15, and then out on the PCT, being up at higher elevation in the Sierra. So no, I will not be taking really anything extra aside from the hoodie that I now do a lot of hiking in. I've been basically living in this hoodie that I have under here for quite some time. So um, that I guess that's an extra thing that I will be taking on the AT and all the rest of my hikes this year. So another super common question that I've been getting a ton of is what are you doing for rain protection? So if some of you don't know, the AT is a super wet trail and it rains all the time. In 2015, I think it rained every single day I was in North Carolina. So what I'm doing for rain protection this year doesn't really differ from anything I've done in the past. I'll have my rain jacket that I usually use, which is the Z-Pax Virtus rain jacket, a pair of rain pants. So for the first time, I'm actually taking rain pants on a long distance hike. I picked some up last year before going to Scotland and really dug them. And then as far as my pack, because I do not use DCF packs anymore, they're not waterproof, I use the Waymark Evolve, and I am using a pack liner. So this pack liner is made out of a material called Nilofume. It's just basically a big plastic bag, but I heard a ton of great things about it. So I picked a couple up and I've been using them ever since. So all of the things that I really wanna keep dry, I'll just put down in the Nilofume bag in my pack and that should keep things pretty dry. Now, as far as my camera, uh, I will be using a bunch of extra gallon Ziploc bags. So most of the time my camera strapped up here on my shoulder strap, but obviously if it's raining, I don't want it to get drenched. So I will take my camera off, put it in a Ziploc bag and put it down in my pack inside of that Nilofume bag. So that's basically what I'm doing for rain protection. Aside from that, when you're out on the AT, uh, you just kind of have to embrace the suck and get wet. It's just part of hiking that trail. So I'm gonna try to do as much as I can to keep dry as much as I can. But my big things are that rain suit that I'll be using and the Nilofume uh, pack liner. Another huge concern that I see from anybody going out to do the AT and a question that I've been getting a lot is are you worried about ticks? So sorta, uh, back in 2015, I actually got bit by a tick and contracted ehrlichiosis, which is a form of Lyme's disease. So I've had my bouts with ticks. And ever since then, I have learned to basically spray all of my gear with permethrin. Uh, so before I go out onto a trail, I take my pack, I take my clothes, my shoes, my socks, even my hat, and I spray it with permethrin, uh, which is a great, bug spray that usually stays on your clothes and on your material for quite some time. Aside from that, it's really just being vigilant and it's making sure that you're checking yourself every night that you get into camp. When you're laying in your tent, you just start kind of investigating and digging around and digging around in your hair and beard and making sure that you don't have any ticks attached to you. And yeah, just staying vigilant on it, using bug spray on your gear and I'm not really worried about ticks because I just understand that that's a part of hiking that trail and I do what I can to combat them. 
Will you be at AT kickoff or trail days in May? I will not be at either of them. So I'm actually flying out to Georgia a little bit before AT kickoff, and then I am have a couple things to do while I'm out there before I actually start the AT. So I will not be able to make it out to AT kickoff. Unfortunately, I do have some other things to do before I start my hike. And then when it comes to May, I'll actually be jumping off the trail at the end of April and then shooting down to Peru at the beginning of May. And I'm not gonna be back in time to get out to trail days. So I really wish I could go to trail days. I haven't been out there since 2015. So in answer to that question again, I will not be at AT kickoff and I will not be at Appalachian trail days. Are you doing the Great Divide Trail as soon as you jump off the AT? No, I'm going to Peru and then I will have a month off before I start my through hike of the Great Divide Trail. So a little bit of an update on that trail. I was originally gonna hike um, southbound and then jump on the Colorado Trail. I've decided to go northbound. Just looking at the logistics of that trail and a lot of the snowpack that's still up in the Canadian Rockies, I just think that it'll be a wiser move to go northbound, then I'll get a shuttle down to the border and then hitch to do the Colorado Trail. So AT, then Peru, then about three weeks off, then the Great Divide Trail. All right guys, so I think that pretty much sums up all of the most frequently asked questions that I've been getting about the AT. I've been thinking about doing some more of these FAQ videos on Peru, on the Great Divide Trail and the Colorado Trail, and maybe getting into a little more specific about what those trails are all about in a general FAQ video. So if you like that idea, if you wanna see those videos in the next coming months, leave me something down below and let me know your opinion. I'll see what I can do. In less than a week, I'll be flying out to Georgia and starting my AT hike. Uh, coming up real soon, I will have my full gear list for the AT, and then right after that will be the start of my AT series. So like I said, I'm gonna be doing something completely different this year and kind of meshing those two worlds of trail vlog and documentary style film, putting those together. So hopefully you guys will dig those and follow along. Speaking of documentary, a quick shameless plug, um, in case some of you didn't get the notification, I did release my film through the Great Southwest. If you haven't checked it out yet, I'll leave a link down below. It's available over on theoutdoorevolution.com and 50% of every single download from now till basically forever will go back to the Arizona Trail Association. To this point, in two weeks, we have raised over $10,000 for the Arizona Trail Association. So thank you all so much for coming out to the showings, for downloading the film, for all the amazing feedback I've got, for all your support for my film and the Arizona Trail. You guys are amazing. Thank you for helping me build such an awesome community and give back to the trail. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.